So shooters and reloaders out there, Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to you from the hot lead zone. And this video is about the Lee neck sizing collet die. And Lee makes these in quite an assortment of calibers. I've got just four of them here and I have others, but to uh, give you an idea, these are our Lee neck size collet dies. And Lee features that die right on the front cover of their second edition reloading manual because the company looks at this die as being one of their real engineering uh, achievements. If you check some some websites like Precision Reloading, Midway USA, you'll see that Lee produces nothing for neck rimming, neck turning. So why is that? Well, it's all because of the Lee neck sizing collet die that they do produce. So you see, I get asked this question all the time. Fortune Cookie 45 LC, why don't you use a bushing type of neck sizing die? Why don't you ream your case necks or turn the case necks? This kind of thing. Well, here's the idea behind that. It starts with fire form brass. So you've got an empty cartridge case that's been custom fired in a chamber. So then what you want to do is only size the neck to hold the bullet. And that's why you might want to use a neck sizing die only instead of a full length sizing die. Now of course if you're loading for a semi-automatic rifle or you're loading for a lever action rifle then you'll want a full length resize. Slide action rifle, full length resize. Because that gives you the best chance to get functioning where the cartridge will go back into the chamber. But for our bolt guns we have the advantage of camming action so that the case, once it's fire formed for that chamber, will fit that chamber again. Now a tool like the RCBS Precision Mic is almost essential to allow us to adjust our fire form brass to be a very good functioning round for our rifle and also to control the headspace so that we have a safe round to shoot. So it's very important to use something like that. Now Hornady makes a case comparator that if you're good at using that, that'll do very nicely also. But for most of us, the precision mic is a slam dunk. Well, we'll go into that, but I actually have videos on the use of the precision mic that goes into detail on how that's done. So you see the case goes back into the chamber safely and for high performance with the precision mic and fire form brass. But the neck is important because if the neck dimension after the bullet is seated is too big, the round won't chamber. So we do have to size the neck to get it to go back in the chamber plus hold the bullet. Now with our SAMI controlled chamber sizes, what the factories do in producing brass is to give us the correct balance between the dimension of the neck and the thickness of the brass, the width of the bullet, so that when that goes into the chamber and the round is fired, there's enough room for the brass to expand on both sides of the neck to release the bullet. Now the whole idea of using a bushing or a custom type of neck sizing die and the companies that make bushing dies like RCBS and Hornady and uh, Forrester, this kind of thing, they produce very nice bushings that will go ahead and size the neck and wind up with an internal diameter that will be proper for the tension to hold the bullet. And the idea of reaming the inside of the neck and then turning the outside is to create concentricity of the center of the, the opening that holds the bullet plus concentricity of the outside 
to be concentric with the chamber and thereby release the bullet in center line axis for best accuracy. But however, the problem with that is if we have stock SAMI type chamber necks, we don't need all of that because the width of the brass and the regular reloading dies that we use will work for our SAMI chambers. And unless we have a custom neck that is a smaller neck so that we can go ahead and, and turn and ream to get the right neck thickness and the bullet fit for that custom chamber, that's where neck turning and neck reaming come in to best effect if you have a rifle that's got a custom chamber. Now, of course, the idea of outside neck turning is to produce a neck thickness that's more uniform going around the case. And if we can do that without taking away too much brass to weaken the, the case neck, then that's the idea behind using the neck turning in a stock or factory type of chamber. The reason that Lee doesn't produce any neck turning or neck reaming type of equipment is because the Lee neck collet sizing die takes care of all of that for us and it can be very useful especially for our factory rifles but also useful for custom chambers and rifles also. So once again Lee equipment including the neck sizing collet die has been used to set records in competition and this kind of thing so that this will give us performance. Let's see how that works. What you see here are two of the common Lee neck sizing collet dies. This one's 223 and this one is 308. And I like these so much that I replaced the Lee die lock ring with a Forrester and a Hornady. So what the Lee neck sizing collet die does is it produces neck tension by squeezing the case neck down against this mandrel to an inside diameter produced by the mandrel that will hold the bullet correctly. And if we use the force that Lee recommends will actually cause a uniformity of the case neck thickness. So this offsets to some degree any advantage that we might have to do any outside neck turning or inside reaming. Plus, because the mandrel is straight and is controlled by the decapping pin, you also produce low runout of the case neck. That's a very good advantage to have with this die. Now the disadvantage is that after maybe five or six shootings, you're going to wind up with a situation where you'll have to go ahead and full length size anyway. But by then you've got to think about doing a case neck annealing as well. Now putting the die back together is simple. I would say put a little bit of this grease on the collet first though because you want that to really close well. So that goes in first and then the mandrel goes in and then the cap goes back on. Simple. So to give you an idea what we have here is Winchester Western 223 brass that's been wet tumbled. You can tell because it's nice and dry, no dust. And we've prepped it, done all the all the prep work with the primer pockets and the and the flash holes and the deburring and all that kind of thing. So anyway, you take this brass and you go ahead and measure your thickness. So you measure it in four places and you see 12, well that's 13. 13, rotate 90 degrees, measure again. 12, measure again. 13 and a half, measure again. 13. 
So it would be common to think about going ahead and taking a neck turning tool and turning it down to say 11 and a half or 12 so that you're trying to get that neck more concentric and the cost of that would be to increase the distance from the case neck to the chamber of a stock rifle and if that's a good thing to do you might think that will give you better accuracy look what happens if you go ahead and run this into the Lee neck sizing collet die I'll get that in focus so the idea is to run this in into the die like this and feel the tension at the end and the collet closing and squeezing onto that now when you take the case out of the die there's no drag so there's no lengthening of the brass give it a 90 degree rotation and do it again now if we measure the case neck thickness let's see what that's done we got 10.5 or 11 there's 11 90 degrees measure it 11.5 rotate 90 degrees measure it again 11 and then rotate it again 11.5 there's no extra tension there I'm not trying to make that into whatever it is So what do you think about the neck thickness now? No reaming, no turning, and if I wanted even more I could have given it a little more tension with this die. That's minimum tension actually because if you check the bullet you got plenty of tension to hold the bullet you don't need more than that but the mandrel can be squeezed down even harder if you want to get an even more concentric neck plus if you go in and run it and then give it a little turn and run it again if you give that enough turns and keep running that in there and that, that's easy to do you'll just get more, cons more uniformity of the case neck with this die without doing any kind of turning now for those of you who need a little more demonstration I went ahead and loosened the die lock ring and gave it a little more so we're going to have more pressure. Now Lee actually wants you to use a lot of pressure but I don't recommend that. All you need is enough to get the bullet tension to hold the bullet. But anyway I've increased the amount of squeezing now that that's going to do. And then here's my brass. You see all that beautiful brass in there? All prepped. We'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and grab one, just any one. No need to pick out any one in particular. Let's go ahead and measure that again. And you can write this down if you want. 11.5. We go to 90 degrees, and you get 12.5. Go 90 degrees again. You get 13. And 90 degrees again. Oh, 12.5. So, were you writing those down? If you're a neck turner, you'll probably want to turn that to 11.5 or 11 thousandths and an extra half. So, put that into the the press and now you notice no case lube. Again, a big advantage. Put that in, and yes, that took more pressure, you see? But there wasn't any grab. That's very important. Then turn it 90 degrees. Repeat. If you want to do it again, turn another 90 degrees. And then turn it again, another 90 degrees. If you want to really do it. Not necessary to do all that though. But now let's go ahead and measure. So again, we, it's, it's zeroed out. Let's zero that. 
and then measure that. You get 11 and a half, 11.5, turn it, 11.5, turn it, 11.5, well, let's see, get that right, you gotta get that right, 11.5, 11.5. Whoop! I didn't. I wasn't on the uh, the camera. Let's do that again. Eleven point five. Eleven point five. Eleven. Well, you get the idea. It's it's right there. Eleven point five. How much more case neck uniformity do you need? with a stock rifle. Now you got 11.5 and you're going to have a little release of the bullet around the chamber and it's also got low run out because of the mandrel. That's a pretty good setup. Doggone die only cost $23. No wonder Lee's so proud of it. Now, whenever we use a standard die that has a, a expander ball that goes in there and then you've got to pull that ball through to get the, the neck tension right, that puts a lot of stress on the brass. It really doesn't matter who makes this kind of expander ball in a resizing die, but all expander balls are really infernal. And if we can get away from using an expander ball, we're much better off. If it wasn't infernal, we wouldn't have to lubricate the case necks to keep the infernality from happening. We're always worried about stretching the brass. Let's see what happens when you use the Lee next size collet die. So again, we're, we're zero. Measure the brass. And it's 1.7535. Now, as you know, and we should know this by heart, the length, the maximum overall length of a 223.556 case is 1.760. So this is less than 1.760. Doesn't need any trimming. But again, 1.7535. Okay, let's go ahead and put this this round in here and run it into the the Lee next size collar die. And we'll go ahead and do that a few times. And then we'll measure that and see what, what it is. Is it 1.753? 5? Well, 1.754, so 1.7535 was what it was before. Maybe I just rotate that a little bit. Get a good measurement on that. 17 five four five so to show you that we don't have problems with this causing brass stretching 1.7565 we'll run that in there now we'll see 1.7565 no change in the length of the brass. We like that. Plus the beauty of this die is that at $23 a copy is very affordable. Plus you can use the capabilities of this die in addition to anything else you might be doing in case prep. If you want to add a little better concentricity of the, the uh, case neck to a little lower run out you can add it with this die or not. And you can buy these dies as part of what Lee calls their ultimate die sets that include this die in the set for even better value. Shooters and reloaders out there, take care. Good reloading to everybody out there. Bye for now.